We have a major two part development in Trump Russia that I want to tell you about. And some of you have noticed, I know because you've written to me that we've been easing off of the Trump Russia stories lately. Lots of little things have happened in the last couple of weeks in Trump Russia, and I've been trying to cover really just the big picture of it, increasingly talking about the 2018 midterms in relation to Trump Russia, not so much following the day to day other than that really big recent story about Michael Cohen, although that story is becoming much bigger and sort of independent than Trump Russia anyway. There are now some really big developments relating to that Russian lawyer, Natalia Veselnitskaya, who you might recall met with Donald Trump Jr. and Paul Manafort and many others in Trump Tower. So there's news about her. Uh, and there's also news about the wacky and outrageous way that Donald Trump reacted to the Veselnitskaya news. So let's first start with the facts. Natalia Veselnitskaya secured a meeting in Trump Tower with Donald Trump Jr. and other campaign officials on the basis that she was going to be bringing to them possible dirt on Hillary Clinton. It was intimated to Natalia Veselnitskaya that if indeed she was able to deliver the dirt and it helped Donald Trump win, then the incoming Trump administration, the then potential Trump administration, would be willing to look at easing Russian sanctions related to the Magnitsky Act. This is an offer for a quid pro quo really, really bad. The defense to this from the Trump team, well, there have been numerous defenses. Number one, no one really thought she was bringing dirt on Hillary, so there was no quid pro quo. Number two, no real quid pro quo was offered. We just said, listen, if we're president, if, if Trump is president, we would look at sanctions. Number three, Trump had no idea about it. So in the end, it doesn't matter. It's hard to believe. And number four, that this is just some random Russian lawyer who is in no way connected to the Russian government. She's not a spy. She's not an informant. She's not authorized to do any work on behalf of the Kremlin. That fourth claim has now crumbled because of documents that have been released uh, and reported on by The New York Times and because of what Natalia Veselnitskaya her herself said in an interview on NBC News. So first, the documents. Emails show that she actually worked directly with Russia's head legal office against a U.S. Justice Department fraud case, which was uh, being litigated against a Russian firm, not just a random private lawyer. She also has recanted her own claims that she has nothing to do with the Russian government during an NBC News interview. She said, yeah, actually, I was a source of information for a top Kremlin official whose name is Yuri Chaika, the prosecutor general. This is another way to say that she was a Russian informant, a term often used interchangeably for Russian spy. Spy doesn't mean operating in literal shadows late at night. It means in many cases informing government officials of what's going on here or there. Donald Trump Jr. and Paul Manafort and whoever else was in the room at Trump Tower met with a Russian government informant on the pretense that she might be bringing dirt uh, on Trump's opponent and with an intimated quid pro quo of helping to ease sanctions if she delivered the dirt. So that already is huge. Now, there's a reasonable question that skeptics would ask here, or really anyone who's thinking critically. If this was a Russian agent, a Russian informant, whatever, why did she do all that stuff then and now admits to it, right? Like, why is she now all of a sudden admitting to this stuff? And this is what I've been saying for years. This is the model. Create instability. If eventually we find out what really went on here, we will likely fi find out that a Trump presidency was not actually their end. It was their means. Trump was the patsy, the sort of convenient clown. The real goal is to expose American democracy as being in chaos, to create outrage, to pile up scandals, to make it even tr uh, more difficult for Trump to operate. Once you understand that, and you understand that this has been the longstanding Russian playbook, right, for dealing with the United States. I've talked about the 1997 book, Foundations of Geopolitics by Alexander Dugan. Then it becomes clear why the same person, Natalia Veselnitskaya, would both try to get involved with the Trump campaign covertly and then later admit to who she is. So that's the news as far as the lawyer herself is concerned. But just as stunning, or maybe even more, is how Donald Trump reacted to this news, which is what I want to talk about next, okay? Today's program is made possible in part by Futur, the social forecasting game where players come together 
and compete with each other to predict future events. You can play the game on the Android or iOS app or in your web browser. You can wager on everything from politics to sports in the game's in-game fake currency. I'm on Futur. You can find my account and follow me by clicking the link in the description if you're watching this on YouTube. This week on Futur, I posed the question, will Democrats flip the U.S. Senate in 2018? What do you think? Click the link in the description. Make your wagers, and you can browse the politics category on Futur to find other predictions. Sign up at Futur.com. Start making your forecasts on political topics or anything else free. It's on Android, iOS, and your web browser, and it's spelled F-U-T-U-U-R.com.